You need me to rescue. Come down. Got it. Now you got to pull your own weight up. <laughs> well done, Cham. which is uh, Neil. We'll talk to Neil in a minute. And um, hopefully we may have a guest joining us live on the screen behind us. Um, if technology allows us, because it's always hard to get hold of, of people on site. Today we're talking about, is craftsmanship actually a real thing on site these days? What do you think? I'd love to know what you say about that. When you're working on site, is there such a thing as craftsmanship these days or has that gone out the window? Because apparently um, complaints to Citizens Advice Bureau have gone up 20% in the last couple of years because of uh, bad workmanship on site. So let us know in the comments and uh, what you think is happening to you on site and um, it'd be great to hear from you. Hello to Neil, how are you my friend? I'm good Andy, how are you? Yeah, not too bad, not too bad. Well, you've come all the way from Bedford I believe? Yes I have. It's nice to actually get out and be in this environment. No, 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 you're, a proper, you're a proper craftsman aren't you? I am, well I'd like to think so, yes I am, yeah. So t tell us what you do. So I am a joiner and hardwood floor fitter. Okay. So with a lot of what we do in terms of parquet flooring, when we're doing flooring work, we are focusing a lot on detailed work like borders, inlays and things like that. And Lots of uh, technical joints and... Yeah, exactly. Crafts. So if you've got borders going on, geometric patterns involved in different species of wood, you've got to see and see out the edges and you've really got to think about the detail. Everything has to be spot on with that kind of work. Beautiful. I bet you've got some horror stories for us. I have. Fantastic. If you've got any horror stories, let us know. We've also got a feature at the end of this show that we're going to call Ask Andy. Um, there's a very scary graphic that you'll see for that come on the screen in a minute. And um, that's where you can ask us any questions that you want, anything that might be you might be troubled with in construction or you might be looking at um, sort of different things in your life. That might be, we'd be your agony uncles for today. We can ask any questions. Just put any questions, anything you're struggling with. Um, we'd love to know that. Um, so what we're going to do now is just look at some photographs because... Um, um, we've had some sent in, and I just want to share these with you because these photographs are amazing. And you may have seen these on the page, but we've got some brilliant photographs to show you. And the first one, uh, you may have seen this. I don't know if you can see that there, Neil. Yeah, is, uh, that's yeah, that's good. It's like some sort of, um, it's like a graveyard. There's some headstones have been stolen. <laughs> yeah. So some German tourists have put the towels down already for the, the summer holidays coming up. Um, that's unbelievable. There. That, that good craftsmanship there, do you think? Um, no, I mean, that's a bit of a, that is unbelievable, a bit of shrinkage going on there. I'm just looking at what's underneath. Yeah, it's, well, just gravel, I think. Just, just chuck some water on there. That'll be absolutely fine in the morning. That's probably what they said as they walked away. It looks like, um, it doesn't look like some sort of graveyard, doesn't it? So um, thank you to whoever sent that in. That's unbelievable. As we move on to our next photograph, this has uh, been sent in by a plumber, I think, from Essex, who accidentally ripped his trousers. You can tell us a plumber there, Neil, because it's £20 notes. <laughs> if it had been a floor layer, of course, it'd be £50 notes. Yeah, obviously, yeah. <laughs> 
or 30 pound notes if it was a laborer, maybe. Um, so thank you for that, Plumber. Send it in. Get yourself a new pair of trousers. You can afford that. Uh, moving on next, we've got um, this has been sent in. I actually know the guy that runs this company. It's a marquee company from Bath. And um, they've had a lot of phone calls uh, about this because they've uh, got their guys on the back there, the best erections in the Southwest. And they've had loads of phone calls um, from that, uh, mainly from men wanting to know what the secret is, Neil. I mean, what's going on inside the van? That's what I'm asking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I love the thing that they've blurred out is the phone number rather than the yeah. massive erections there. Um, and our next photograph has been sent in some um, electricians down in Bournemouth come up with a brand new way of looking cool on site site staying cool and of course keeping the safety would you wear them mate um i'm just trying it depends on what adhesive they've used to stick them on oh yeah it's gonna yeah. be that um, that no nail stuff isn't it so would you wear them i think that they suit electricians uh, fantastically uh, and just finally to end this session off we've been sent in a lovely video just to prove health and safety which is um some lovely guys on a roof watering it down and giving it a bit of a clean. Here we go. That helps us, you know, you think there that he's actually home. So there we go. That actually wasn't a rope he was holding onto there. It was the pipe he was holding onto. Health and safety straight out of the window. Lovely stuff. Ever done anything as crazy as that? Uh, no, not that risky. No, thankfully I don't have to go on roofs. <laughs> so we'll, can we get on the screen uh, Dean, who's a, a, a professional bricklayer from Essex. Will it work? Here we go. We've got a screen behind us. Hopefully Dean's going to come up. But if not, we'll leave him to get on for his day because I know he's very, very busy. How, how long did it take you to get out today, mate? Uh, about an hour and 20. Oh, was it? Yeah, so it's not too bad. Roads are still quite clear. Which there he is, there he is on screen. Can you hear us there, Dean? Yes, I can hear you loud and clear. <laughs> oh, brilliant. It works. What a team, eh? How are you doing, good. my friend? I'm good, my man. Yeah, what's happening? Look, listen, let's see if this technology works. They're meant to look bigger on TV. Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> hey, tattoos can do that. They can make anything look bigger. Yeah. <laughs> you, got, you got the day off today? Yeah, well, I've been pricing jobs the last two days. Um, I like to spend midweek towards the end of the week pricing them so um, I can sit down and really work on them over the weekend. So, And obviously, I looked at the forecast today. It's a little bit uh, it and miss. So I like to try to time it if I can, you know. But anyway, how are you guys? Well, all right? We're, we're good, thank you, mate. What, what, what do you class your, your trade as? What do you call yourself when someone asks you what you do? Well... You know, if it is an out and out bricklayer. Someone says to me, What do you do? I mean, my um, trade name is the traditional bricklayer, you know. Um, and yeah, a bricklayer, but I think as times have changed um, a little bit, it's, you know, it's, I think there's two types of bricklayer now there's a brick heat and there's a bricklayer. So um, only bricklayers will know that terminology at the moment, but I think that's going to come into play in the next five, 10 years, you know. Okay, well, we'll talk about that in a minute, what you think the difference is. Yeah, sure. A question for both of you. We're, we're talking about craftsmanship. I'll come to you first, Neil. Yeah. Um, how, would you, how would you define craftsmanship in a single sentence? So I would define it as attention to detail yeah. and passion within your craft and what you do and focusing on the finer details. That's what I see craftsmanship as. Fantastic. Being. Brilliant. What about you, Dean? What would you define sort of craftsmanship as? that can produce a bit of magical work just with his enthusiasm, his mind, and his trowel. Notice I said just a bricklayer. Yeah, I'm, so <laughs> I'm, I'm, very, I'm very personal. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, I saw some quotes what, what people think it is. Um, one is a refusal to compromise on quality for the sake of economy, because we see that a lot, don't we? People cut in corners sometimes. To, yeah, we do. Um, another one is uh, we build structures to last generations, not just quick fixes, and we use the finest materials and methods. So that is craftsmanship. Isn't it? So what, I'll come to you, Dean. What, what thing have you seen on site that you think that is absolutely terrible? Uh, do you know what? It, 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 I'm, I'm not in the business of uh, putting people down, you know that. But uh, overall, it is evidently clear craftsmanship and bricklaying has reduced, okay, um, over the years. 
particularly on the new builds. Now, I had an interesting conversation with a couple of architects last week who I do a lot, do a lot of work for. And my emphasis on this has always been they're just designing these square boxes these days. There's no real passion or artwork in the houses, you know, whereas in the old days, the early 1900s, to have a bullseye and arch in your house, it was a sign of wealth. It was a sign of, of a man showing his ego, look at my ass, you know, a sign of strength. Nowadays, they're built just square boxes. And I had a conversation with him and I said, look, why do you guys keep designing these? Obviously, it's to do with time and money. You keep designing these square boxes. They're, they're just frying them down. And, and it, do you know what? It, very interesting. He replied, he said, Dean, statistically, we haven't got the craftsmen anymore. And I said, well, what do you mean? He said, well, the time it takes to do an arch correctly and the time it takes is too money absorbing. He said, gone are the days where arches could be included in drawings and in the financial side of things where they could be performed and created at a good quality and at a good pace. So what he was trying to explain so many words nowadays is brick lads cannot do an arch or a bullseye in a, in a nice rated time and produce the quality still. So what they've done is they have these arches and bullseyes now prefab, pre-made. You have them ordered to site, they come in two, uh, they could come in third. It was interesting to hear their side. So a super developer uh, is looking at the key points of obviously time materials, and they've took in account that they haven't got the craftsmanship to put these arches in by hand as they would do 30, 20, 30 plus years ago. Yeah, so no, statistically, it, it's facts here. You know. You can I always love cathedrals. When you look at cathedrals, sorry, buddy, there's a slight lag there. Um, you, if you want to look at proper craftsmanship, cathedrals are amazing things to look at. What, what do you see on site? Any, any type yeah, of things? That... I mean, like on site, obviously, like, you know, I just echo what Dean said about there's no real craftsmanship on site much anymore because it is about time and, you know, cutting costs and things like that. And they are just building these square brick flat pack furniture houses essentially yeah? yeah so they're in and they're out so skirtings get fitted because you know they're just in a rush they get them on they get them onto the walls like tolerances aren't always taken into account i've been on some new builds where the staircases the stringers are coming away from the wall yeah. so new build seems to be where it's a yeah well, this is the thing it is a you know so there's a thin line between craftsmanship in new builds and then just in general day-to-day -day people's homes that have lived in for like 10, 15, 20 years. Yeah. Um, and, you know, like Dean's saying about all these older properties, there's a lot of craftsmanship that's gone into the exterior structure of those buildings. And then on the inside, sometimes you face worse challenges where over the years they've put radiators in that don't suit the period of the house so then they've gone through skirting boards that are like 11 inches high and they're traditional you can't get them anymore yeah. so you know it's just it's a big mix between trades sometimes people don't think about you know the impact on what they're doing you know and it is showing a bad example to new people coming into the trades that oh, yeah. you know if this is how you do it you know, that's kind yeah, of exactly. like leading them down the wrong approach. Well, I'm an electrician and I've been an electrician for sort of 25 years, I suppose. And um, in the last year, there's been a mass rush to um, get loads of rental properties tested. So I've done like 100 tests in the last yeah. years. And it has been depressing to see the standard of workmanship that yeah. people have left. And, and we're talking about electrics here, things that can kill you. The, the stuff that matters. Unbelievable. More than yeah. I saw a, 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 a chap had moved a fuse board one and a half meters to the left like that and the guy said this it seems to be some fizzing and buzzing from us in the attic and what he'd done to move the, to move the cables he just twisted them together the cables live cables and wrapped tape around it and then extended the that's correct i just can't yeah, believe yeah. it and it's been um, quite depressing seeing what other electricians have been doing is that happening in your let's know in the comments what have you seen if you've got any photographs by the way um just put them in the comments of some stuff that you've seen or maybe some amazing uh, craftsmanship because there, there is still uh, amazing craftsmanship out there. we've got some photos actually some uh, unbelievable craftsmanship that's been sent in and after 
first one here, I think, have a look at this one, guys. I think this one's been, uh, I think it's been an exposed war there. At least they've got an RSJ at the top. <laughs> but um, that's, I mean, there's no pride gone into that at all. They've just found stuff on site and stuck it in. <laughs> Dino, Dino's nodding his head, <laughs> shaking his head. Um, the, the next photograph's one, uh, one of my bugbears because of an electrician. And you've, you've got to put things in what's called zones. You've got to, you know, with switches and sockets, you've got to go either straight up or sort of um, diagonally, not diagonally, uh, horizontally across. And that, that looks like a slug's just sort of <laughs> <laughs> gone across the wall, hasn't it? It's like that electric current, like yeah. just going wherever it That is a favourite thing for electricians to do if they're pulling a cable, to pull it out to see where the cable goes. And um, so, you know, if, if someone had gone and knocked, knocked a, a picture to hook in the wall or something like that, or drilled something, they would have gone straight for the cable because there's nothing to tell them that there's there. Um, Dean's going to love this next picture. That's none of your room, mate, is it? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I, I could name a few, top. but I'm not going to believe all these. <laughs> this came off your phone. Yeah. Um, I saw some Spanish builders build once. They 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 build like this, and but they render everything. And they, yeah, they do. They don't actually do any exterior yeah. brickwork, do they? They get that. They cover it, and it looks fantastic when it's when it's done. And finally, um, roofers out there, you're going to absolutely love this. Um, there's like just two ridges that they, they didn't know what to do to join them together. But I suppose that would work. Would, it? would, that, would that would keep the rain off? Would it work? Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely a bespoke fit, isn't it? It's bespoke, that's for sure. If you've got any photographs, <laughs> photographs like that, please send it in because we, we love stuff like that. Let's look at what we've got on comments. We've got some some stuff sent in um, that you've been writing to us and telling us about things on, on Facebook. So my first comment is from Jason Cook. Hello, Jason. He says, I'm a chippy and there aren't many of us left. Um, too many hammer hands. Hammer hands? Have you heard that saying before? Uh, someone that was just yeah. saying, I suppose. Yeah. Uh, too many hammer hands on site who think speed, that's what we've been saying, is far more important than quality. Ask them to do anything but hang doors, usually badly, or skirting, or archy, or architrave, I suppose, um, usually just as badly as the doors, and then they're screwed. Thank you, Jason. I, I think a lot of people would agree with that. Um, Dave Miles is uh, commented and said, too often speed takes precedence, which is what Jason was saying, over quality and craftsmanship. I'm a mature age apprentice chippy. We'll get on that in a minute, Neil, because you were like that as well, weren't you? And um, I've noticed that teaching and being allowed to perfect craftsmanship is secondary to getting oh, that's, that's, that is a sad state of affairs. And uh, finally, thank you, Nige, Nige Smith. He says, yep, I agree all about speed and earning big bucks. Ask a first fix chippy to cut a roof and he wouldn't have a clue. What do you reckon about that, Dean? Does that, that all ring true? Yeah, I mean, I'm laughing here because I notice all the comments are from Chippies. All the bricklayers are at work. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it must not be raining. <laughs> yeah, yeah do, you, do you know what? Um, we, we need to, we need to um, look at the source of the problem here. Now, I'm working on uh, another project at the moment, part of a documentary. And um, what we've found is if... My sitting in Guild's apprenticeship was between four and six years. Now, an MVQ apprenticeship is two years. <laughs> so how has someone reduced the craft and trade from six years to two years? And we wonder why we're having problems and complaints going up. Now, what's happening is the lack of apprentices coming into the, into the trade as bricklayers. Um, and the generational change is now. Now, the good old school bricklayers, the good old school bricklayers. So on my apprenticeship, we was taught the difference in the bonds, the arches, bullseyes, and we learned line work on site. That was a given. We didn't do much line work in college. It was all about architectural, you know, knowledge. Nowadays in college, it's all about line work because they don't do the architectural, the, the feature work. So... The problem we've got now is that generation is retiring. They're at 60, 70, 65s. So in the year 2000 and 99, 99, 2000, if you were 16 years old, you would have been trained from an apprenticeship by these old school. Now, by now, you would be aged 38, 39. You'd have had 20 years experience. So that level of quality would have maintained. Then that generation would teach the younger ones coming through the classes of 2010, for example. So the problem we had was the internet revolution in 2000. Kids didn't want to go on a trail. Why would you want to go lay thousand bricks all day when you can go on a computer? It was a phenomenon. So 
the input of apprentices in the year 2000 was so slow. That's that's what we had. So we needed to input then. So we have lack of bricklayers now. And I suppose it's the same in carpentry as well. It all comes down to statistics and figures and what are we doing as a nation to encourage these youngsters to come on board and learn. Yeah, well, I, I did it. Yeah, thank you. I, you're right. I did an apprenticeship. It was four or five years. Um, NVQ, it was called, I suppose. But I was taught by old school electricians. And, you know, everything was done slowly. And, and that was 25 years ago. It was a proper apprenticeship. You did yours slightly differently. You learned to be a joiner slightly differently. Yeah, I did. I done my courses and I retrained and, you know, learned it properly through, you know, teaching instruction and things like that. But then after I learned that, and then I done, I worked for various different companies, you start to pick up bad habits from different people. People all of a sudden start to change what they're doing. And you start to think, hang on, that's not right. So I want to do it right. So I'm going to learn something else that's different. A lot of, you know, the resources nowadays, you can get taught online. That's just a given. It's an easy way of doing it. But they're, like Dean says, the passion comes from those people that are old school that have done it for years. Let me, let me stop you there. So you just said that you can learn stuff online. You can, okay. yeah, you can. So I, I, one of my notes here, is that one of the problems that with poor craftsmanship? Do people say, I'm not bothering to get anybody in or, or I'm not going to do proper training. I'm going to go and watch a YouTube how-to video. I've done YouTube how-to videos. I'm not saying that they're the wrong thing to do. But I say, do people just watch YouTube videos and think, right, I know what I'm doing now. I'll whack that piece of wood up. Do you think, is that a problem? Um, it is and it isn't. It helps in some ways because if you've got a DIYer at home that hasn't got the money to get a chippy in or joiner to do architraves and doors, then Sometimes it's nice to learn those little things. The problem is, and I say this to all my customers or any other tradesman or any apprentice that's with me, no wall is straight in the house. <laughs> so it's all very well you watching a YouTube video that says, scribe your internal miters, you know, or, you know, bevel them or do this or do or cut back, whatever it be. But if a wall ain't straight or it's got a kick in it or it dips in, how do you get around that? Do you screw and plug it? Do you just put as much no nails as you can on it, like hold it, it down, cork. yeah, <laughs> you know, use a whole tub of cork, you know, yeah. how do you get around that, you know, what, what is kind of the easiest way of doing it if you're on a budget, or whether or not you want to get it done properly by a tradesman who knows his angles, his cuts, and what he's going to do. But you, but you, tra you trained um, later in life to be a yes, I did, but you yeah. trained with a company, you used a, a trainee, sort of, he's an adult trainee, yes, as it were. Yes, exactly, yeah. Um, now, one thing that grates electricians a little bit is I like these four-week, five-week courses. Yeah. So, so Dean was just talking about this just then, um, where you can train to be an electrician in five weeks, as some electricians call it, boiling the bag um, electrician. Um, and then they go on site and they're doing terrible stuff and they're, they're, they're getting um, certificates in like four or five weeks. Yeah. Is that happening in the Brick Lane tr trade? Is, that, is it being made? No, that's really, I just listened to what Neil said about these YouTube videos about the wall that's not straight. Now, YouTube is a funny place. We've just created our channel because I felt I needed to, because I wanted to give a channel of truth, showing creative work and normal standard work. Now, the problem with the learners today is they want it all now. They want it all now. No one, I've not met an apprentice or an up and coming tradesman who is willing to put the time in. And exactly what Neil was saying, that wall's not straight. They want to go on YouTube and find out. That comes with years of experience. And mm. this is why they have to respect us ranking officers who have been on site for years, who have been through the mill, who have worked on those wonky walls, you know, with that knowledge. And I just feel in today's society, everything is nah, nah, nah. Everyone's become fast, fix, lazy, want it all tomorrow. Now, go back to my apprenticeship. A year and a half on the odd. Wasn't allowed to pick the trail up. If I pick the trail up, I've got to clip around the back of the head. It's like as if I was not worthy of it. Because these proud men were proud of what they'd done and what they do. And I had to learn the bricks, the mortar, the layout, watching them go down. And do you know what? Then I didn't know what I know now. And I'm thankful for those guys because they gave me the passion. They gave me so it's cool I'll stand with my trailing man with my level. And I'm proud. And you know what? When I try to teach people and they show me one bit of attitude, go. 
I won't waste yeah, my time. Right on it. I, um, I, I, I saw a question here, and I think I know what your answers are going to be to this. Um, as society in general, does society value mass production over good craftsmanship? It's a tough one to call, is it? I think some of it, yeah. yeah. It's a tough one to call, but I think you're right. You know, it's ma a lot of it is mass production nowadays. But there are an, a, the majority of people out there are there are still a group of people out there, customers that we come into contact with every day that have either been let down by someone with a poor quality um, experience and detail, and they want something better. And if you can get those customers, great, because it then allows you to express your craft even further. One thing that's a bugbear for me is when you go into someone's house <clears throat> and you explain a situation like you've got a low BT socket that the skirting needs to go across, you don't just want to cut it out and then fit it in and have exposed MDF. You want to re, you want, you know, you want to- you Electrician. Yeah, you come across a few of these. You want to let that profile flow underneath the socket. Yeah. So you cut your 45, you return it, and then you cut another 45 and you just follow it. All See, the way that's along. craftsmanship, that's what we're talking yeah, about. exactly. And things like this, people don't, you know, stick with people don't do it, they don't adhere to it, they don't have that in their mindset and they just leave it and just go, that'll be yeah. all right, customer won't know. Um, do you agree with what we're saying? Have you, is, has this happened to you, site? Um, is it happening to you now? Are you on jobs where you've seen terrible craftsmanship where people watch a YouTube video and they've, uh, they've done something from YouTube? If you're enjoying what you're watching and if you'd like to see more, just like our this, this um, news, this feed that we're doing through this live feed, just like it. And if you think anyone else can uh, benefit from it, just share it. And so that brings me up to my final bit of this little section is what do you think the solution is to get over this poor craftsmanship that we're possibly be seen on site um i think the best way to get around it is increase the knowledge and the experience within site work and just have don't you know obviously we're going to have couple, it's always going to come down to money at the end of the day it always is we're in an economy where, where you know the whole building trade is growing massively and we're pumping out buildings all the time but i think the best way for any um building company or you know housing company is to just get experience in there that can oversee yeah there's always about experience yes teaching. exactly what do you reckon dean what's the solution to this craftsmanship issue just, we've got yeah just quickly 20 years ago guys i was getting 400 pound a thousand on a four bedroom ass which was valued at around about average value of about 200 250 at top nowadays Price per thousand is five hundred and fifty pound per thousand, and what's the average price of a four bedroom house now? Five fifty, five hundred. Yeah. So house prices have more than doubled, but the rate hasn't. So can we really say it's down to the money? Because I was doing twenty years ago, the, the the same amount of work for the value of the house than what it is in comparison now. So maybe it's we have to, to look. They want more. Profit. Yeah, we have to look deeper now. What we have to look into is. We have to look into the teachers, the colleges. We have to perform a superstructure to recruit these, these chippies, these sparkies, these bricklayers. And we have to have a good foundation and we have to look at what the teachers are teaching. Because I, I know a, a couple that the syllabus is very limited and that's why they're coming out so raw. They're just trying to turn them out. Now, you know the links adverts. Perhaps put a few bricklayers on them. That that encourage that encourage. Them. <laughs> oh, biceps like you, mate. <laughs> yeah, the young men to be cool. But now we need to do something social media wise, TV. We need to show these kids, right? That you ask him what I want to do. That I want to be a computer programmer. I want to be this. I want to nothing wrong with that. But we have a reputation as providing the best brickwork. Is and I'm telling you something now. We are decreasing in that there's modern techniques been invented i see them. youtube to me is like watching the superman film or watching coronation street you've got one real life and one what's not you know and they make everything some of these brick on youtube make it look and i read the comments and i'm like oh my god like it's they, they're idolizing these people so but anyway so yeah more links adverts Let's get these guys on it and let's well, get these kids we're, in. We'll try that next time. So, so we're saying the solution is it's, it's all about training. It's all about education and, and trying to get people right. So um, that brings us to the end of our little section. Uh, stay with me, guys, because uh, we're, we're going to do a little uh, a bit now, um, which is called Ask Andy, where the three of us are going to be your agony ants. Yeah, you wait, Dean. You wait, Dean. <laughs> Thank you. 
I hope that hasn't, that hasn't scared anybody. I wish my teeth were that white. Crikey. So um, we've had some questions sent in, and um, I, I think I've got some answers to this. So they've just come in. It's been put on my desk. Uh, Tristan Rakes from Bath asks, why is it so hard to get hold of aggregates at the moment? Have you had any pro or any materials at all? Any problems with that? I think That's I know the answer. That's definitely a question for Dean. That any one. problems with that? The aggregate yards, you know, a lot of the builders' yards um, are so busy at the moment because there's a boom on. Um, so if you can't get your local builders' merchants, try and source your local recycling yard. So, for example, around London here, I've got two or three where That's you pull in nice. um, <laughs> great, great bulks of it and you get direct. And also, it's cheaper. You know, a, a, a ton of tailings or a ton of That's sand. That's right there in itself. Yeah. It's fifty percent cheaper. Use my use my name as a promo code. <laughs> <laughs> that is brilliant advice. So go to recycling says. I've heard that HS2, um, the job HS2, are taking a lot of aggregates um, out of the country and using everything up. So thank you for that, Dean. That's fantastic. Uh, Simon Moody from Yorkshire. Um, he and this is a brilliant question for you, Neil. Um, I've got a little answer, but I, I think you can ask this one better. What's the best way for an adult to retrain as a tradesman? Um, best way to retrain it if you're an adult now and you've got to that point in your life, you finally whom where you want to go is do your research on courses that are out there, whether they're two-week courses, three-week courses, or yearly courses. Ideally, go for a yearly course because you are going to get a lot more experience from what you're learning there'll yeah. be a lot more variety and diversity and different things that you can touch base on so that's the best way to go see if you can get a, like an adult traineeship with a company yeah exactly yeah so you're actually doing the work whilst learning exactly yeah fantastic thank you very much and then our final um question is from kerry Britton, who's uh, down in plymouth she says uh, my apprentice says loads of weird young and hip words like sick and calm um, but not in the original meaning of the sense is there a way that i could decide for what they actually mean. Have you got any any wisdom for that, Dean? Is that sick? Yeah, <laughs> I get it all the time. I get fan, fan, bruv, and all this, you know. Um, <laughs> you know, listen, remember your ranking officer, right? No, no student <laughs> would talk to authority like that. So don't take it. Let them correct their self, not you correct George. First mistake there. Remember who you are, and they're learning from you. Tell them to have some manner and some respect. <laughs> Brilliant. I love that. What about you, mate? You got any... Uh... Yeah, I mean, I, I must admit, I had one... My apprentice, about three months ago, I fitted this floor, we got it underneath the architraves, and I explained to him how we were doing it, and he went, oh, that's dead. So, it's dead? Oh, this is a new one. I haven't heard what dead. Mean? What, what do you mean? What do you mean? Like, I've cut a cable or something. What's going on? And he was like, oh, no, it's just uh, like a slang that we use. It, it means good, and I'm like... Wait, really? I remember asking the apprentice if he's okay, and he said, yeah. sick. I took him to the hospital. I said to him, I was like, things were a little different when I was at school. <laughs> yeah. like, no, we probably don't do that here. What a mad word. Don't really say good. that when a customer's around. <laughs> um, thank you very much for that, guys. Tristan, Simon, and Kerry, I hope that's helped you with the old uh, Ask Andy with the crazy gravity there. Dean, thank you so much. A pleasure, as always. Thanks for being Thanks, with guys. us. Thanks, guys. Legend. It's good to see you, Dean. Neil, thank you very much. Thank you. It's been brilliant. Um, thank you, buddy. I hope you've enjoyed it, guys. If you have, please like the live feed. Um, I'd like to say thank you to the team here who've been absolutely fantastic, especially Sam, Libby, and James. They've been absolutely brilliant. We hope to see you again soon. We're going to do this in two weeks' time, and uh, we hope to see you then. Thank you very much. Bye for now.